election day is upon us. Hundreds of people, some waiting for hours at Metra to make their voices heard. From Montana's Senate race to an abortion initiative, we'll have you covered from every angle on this most anticipated Tuesday. Um, and we know that Montanans are ready to enshrine their rights in the state constitution. Gathered uh, in, in the cold and in the wind to uh, talk about CI 128 and voting no on CI 128. Plus a winter wonderland in Montana. Snow is falling with some amounts up to a foot. We'll check in with Ed McIntosh on the latest. And not again. For the second time in just months, multiple headstones run over and destroyed at Mountain View Cemetery. The MTN 4 o'clock news starts right now. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this election day. I'm Andrea Lutz. One of the most anticipated election days in history is finally here. Nationally, all eyes are on the presidential race. But here in Montana, one race in particular will have a huge impact in Washington, D.C. It's the much discussed Senate race between incumbent John Tester and his Republican challenger, Tim Sheehy. And that's where we start our team coverage tonight. MTN's Tom Wiley is in Great Falls with the Tester campaign. Tom Wiley at the Holiday Inn in Great Falls. Now, this is the site where Montana Senator John Tester is hosting his official election night event. Of course, Tester has served three terms in 18 years in the U.S. Senate, but the incumbent is likely in the most heated race of his life. He's been in close races before, but he's trailed the majority of polls since his opponent, Tim Sheehy, won the Republican primary in June. But Tester knows Montana. We spoke to him this week. He told us that the trends he's seen in his time in politics gives him optimism that things might break his way on Election Day. Mon Montanans have always voted for the person and not for the party, and I think they're going to continue to do that. Until they quit doing that, I'm going to believe that they're going to do that. That gives me optimism. You can't, you, you can't poll in a state like Montana that's so rural and frontier. Uh, when we'll know is probably the day after election when the votes are counted. Well, Tester's election night event begins at 8.30. That's when we'll head inside to provide coverage and report on the atmosphere at Tester's fourth run for a Montana Senate seat. Tom Wiley, MTN News. All eyes tonight, of course, are on the Tester Sheehy race and a gathering happening in Bozeman for the Republican challenger in this Senate race, Tim Sheehy, where he's going to be with his supporters. This race is a closely watched one. Recent polling showing Sheehy with a slim edge over incumbent John Tester. Sheehy is a Bozeman businessman and a former Navy SEAL combat veteran. The political newcomer says he's a champion for conservative values wants to bring a true Montana spirit to Washington, D.C., even being backed earlier this summer by former President Donald Trump. You have to vote. There are hundreds of thousands of young men and women buried all over this world in little, under little white headstones from Morocco to Southeast Asia, and they fought for your privilege to vote. We call it a right in this country. It's a privilege. Both Montana House seats are also up for grabs tonight. On the western side, it's a rematch between Republican Ryan Zinke and Democrat Monica Trinnell. In the east, two newcomers, Republican Troy Downing and Democrat John Driscoll, will battle it out for that empty seat. We start with the Downing campaign. Here's MTN's Charlie Kleps. Good evening, folks. Charlie Kleps here in downtown Billings, just across the street from the Doubletree Hotel. That's where Troy Downing's campaign party will be held this evening, with his supporters expecting it to be quite the celebration. He's running against John Driscoll of the Democratic Party for the Eastern Congressional seat. This seat was formerly held by Republican Matt Rosendale. And remember, Downing wouldn't be here without winning a packed Republican primary back in June that consisted of other candidates such as Denny Reberg and Stacey Zinn, among many many others. Troy Downing is currently the state auditor and is confident heading into this evening with polls closing in just a couple hours. We've outworked everybody. We'll continue outworking everybody. And I'm not stopping. I mean, people ask me, you know, what's going on Tuesday. I'm, I'm planning for Wednesday now because, uh, you know, we're going to run through the tape tonight and then we've got to hit the ground running because we have a lot of big problems that this nation is facing. And remember, I'll be here all night with your Downing coverage as results continue to pour in. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. I'm John Riley here in Helena, the home of John Driscoll, the Democrat in Montana's eastern U.S. House race.
A U.S. Army veteran, Driscoll grew up in Big Sky Country and served in the Montana National Guard. Driscoll served three terms in the Montana House of Representatives, including serving as Speaker in 1977. And he was elected to the Montana Public Service Commission in 1980, where he served for 12 years. He's ran multiple times for U.S. Senate and U.S. House, always pledging not to raise or spend campaign funds. It's causing, I think, bad behavior in Congress and certainly it's allowing all this bad information to be flowing around. It's just, it's interfering with our ability to talk to each other. So I just decided to run without taking any money. And if I can get to Congress without taking any money, that'll be a big statement by Montanans. If elected, Driscoll says he'd support legislation to protect abortion rights federally, support an international nuclear weapons reduction, and encourage expanding nuclear energy development. He'll be in Helena for election night. Montana's governor race also being decided today. That's between Republican Greg Gianforte and Democrat Ryan Bussey. We'll have much more on that throughout the night. But here's one important measure on the ballot capturing a lot of attention across the state. That's CI 128, which would guarantee the right to an abortion in Montana in the Constitution. MTN's Megan Elaine has more on this. I'm Megan Elaine covering CI 128 tonight, which is an initiative that enshrines reproductive rights in our state constitution. Joining me right now is Christopher Coburn, a part of Montana Securing Reproductive Rights. Christopher, how are you feeling about tonight? Uh, I feel great. You know, the energy across the state is high. It's been high. People are excited and at the polls. Um, and we know that Montanans are ready to enshrine their rights in the state constitution. Awesome. Great. Thank you. We also had our Jonathan Ambirian who talked to a opponent. You know, we just had a gathering at the Capitol with, you know, about 500 people on the steps of the Capitol gathered uh, in, in the cold and in the wind to uh, talk about CI-128 and voting no on CI-128. Again, my name's Megan Elaine. Stay tuned as we keep covering CI-128. And of course, all eyes are on the presidential race tonight across the nation. The latest CBS News poll showing Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump virtually tied in the seven key states, the swing states there that could decide the election. Christian Benavides reports tonight from Atlanta. Polling sites across the country are seeing strong turnout as voters decide the next president. Voters say they came out to weigh in on the issues. The southern border is a, definitely a big issue for me. For me, it's going to be women's rights. Heading into election day, polls showed former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris basically tied in the seven key battleground states, including Georgia, which set an early voting record and has busy polling places today. I love the energy. So you think both sides are energized? Um, to a certain extent, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you're, you're seeing more passion. What do you think is motivating those who are voting for Kamala Harris? Hope, honestly, hope everybody, you know, uh, sees that America is ready to turn this new page in our in our history. The closeness of this race indicates results will likely take a while. On his way to the Harris campaign watch party in D.C., running mate Tim Waltz made a stop in make or break Pennsylvania. It's going to take some time to get results. We're going to go up, down, up, down. But at the end of the day, as we always do, we will get the results that we know are accurate. Casting his ballot in Palm Beach, Florida, Trump so out about the process. I'm hearing in Pennsylvania they won't have an answer till two or three days from now. Uh, I, I think it's an absolute outrage if that's the case. Both candidates will be watching closely with one of the most contentious and unpredictable campaigns in history now in the hands of the people. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Atlanta. Q2 will be our election headquarters throughout the night. We will have live cut-ins starting at 526 every half hour, taking you right up to our extended hour-long 10 o'clock news. And we'll have all the results plus reaction from those campaign parties. Once again, we'll have covered all night, not only on air, but also online at KTVQ.com. On this election day, the weather is playing some tricks on many Montanans. Overcast and some rain in Billings, but a true winter wonderland in other parts. This is Cook City, where snow is falling. And the roads, as you can see, are covered with some fresh powder. It's a similar sight in other areas with some parts of the Treasure State, especially the higher elevation, seeing as much of a foot of snow. Well, let's throw it over to our chief meteorologist, Ed McIntosh, who has more on this winter storm.
Here's a look around the state with some of the scenes from earlier in the day. Cloud cover where we've seen snow showers around the Helena area getting a little bit of a break from time to time, but Butte, the snow continues to increase and the temperatures hovering right around freezing. So we're looking for some slick roadways as we start getting into the rest of the evening and the overnight hours of tonight. Here's some snow blowing around in Bozeman where it's been off and on a bit heavier than it eases up, starts to move back in again. We can see more of that throughout the evening and also some hazardous travel onto the Bozeman Pass. As we take a look over towards Great Falls, gray skies and snow showers starting to move in regionally and here across the state, you can see the snow continuing to have impacts across northern Montana. The forecast coming up. For the second time in just four months, multiple headstones are destroyed at Mountain View Cemetery. Here are some photos of a driver driving up through the cemetery lawn, completely destroying headstones in its path. It's a very similar scene to what happened earlier this July when another driver crashed into the cemetery, also damaging more than a dozen headstones in that incident. Around 30,000 striking Boeing employees are set to return to work tomorrow after accepting the company's latest pay offer. The decision ends a seven week walkout, the costliest strike in the United States in a quarter century. Vanessa Michianga has the latest. Tonight, our membership voted to accept this contract by 59%. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's time, for, uh, it's time for us to come together. This is a victory. A mixed reaction to the union members' vote to endorse Boeing's fourth offer. I think what we got was a fair deal. Um, I think it's a good stepping stone for contracts in the future. The deal includes a 38% wage increase over four years with a $12,000 ratification bonus. Boeing refused to restore a defined pension plan that was frozen by the company about a decade ago. This was definitely not a victory. Um, we were threatened with um, regressive offers and that is something that would have completely split up our membership. An ongoing strike would have increased the company's financial uncertainty in the aftermath of a door plug blowing out on a 737 MAX in January. Investigations followed and production was limited. The company recently reported it lost more than $6 billion in the third quarter. The Anderson Economic Group says that this strike cost the economy more than $11.5 billion. Strikes have consequences. Uh, first of all, workers lose wages, but also if you, you can really hurt the company that's the employer, and customers have alternatives, so they can go down the street and buy something from somebody else. The union says the 33,000 workers it represents can return to work as soon as Wednesday or as late as November 12th. Vanessa Bashania, Scripps News. Still to come on the MTN News here on Q2, a call to the hall. Legendary Shoto rodeo clown Flint Rasmussen is inducted into the National Cowboy Rodeo Hall of Fame. Our Scott Breen is catching up with him in just a bit. The first winter weather strikes across the Treasure State. And Ed has that full seven-day forecast after this.